a presentation of TFNN. Live at TFNN, the Money Masters. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-445-1044. Now, the Money Masters. Good day, Money Masters and Treasure Hunters. Welcome to the May 14th, wonderful Wednesday edition of the Money Masters Show. I'm your host, Steve Rhodes, author of Mastering Probability, the daily newsletter service that is the intelligence for creating financial freedom. Hope everybody out there had a, a great uh, Tuesday. It's wonderful Wednesday, and my outcome, as always, is to help you to become a better Money Master and to provide you with the tools that empower human potential. Because living up to our potential, folks, that's something you and I, we must master each and every day. There's no better way to do it than with empowering beliefs, like what I call the nine rules of the universe. You've heard these before. You know how they go. The universe says to us, rule number one, if you don't move, I won't move. Or said another way, if you sow, you can reap. But first, you must sow rule number two, Unless you change what you are, you will always have what you've got. Boy, that's an important rule, folks. Number three, the way you do anything is the way you do everything. And that is so true. Number four, leaders are what? Well, leaders are a number of things. But one of the things leaders are is leaders are readers out there. So what was the last book you read, the last newsletter you read? Folks, it's not what books, it's not what newsletters cost you, what it costs you if you don't Use them if you don't read them. Rule number five, don't say, if I could, I would. Say, if I can, I will. Number six, wherever you are, be there. If you're at work, be at work. If you're at home, be at home. And, of course, if you're at TFNN, be at TFNN. Thanks so much for joining us. Rule number seven, don't set your goals too low. If you don't need much, guess what? You won't become much. Number eight, happiness, it's not something you postpone for the future. It is something you design for right here, right now, in the present. And number nine, time is our most value is our most valuable asset. Yet many tend to waste it, kill it, and spend it rather than invest it. Not you. You're investing your time with us, and we really do appreciate it. Respect the rules of the universe because they will respect you. It is Wonderful Wednesday. This is Tiger Financial News Network. I'm Steve Rhodes, and welcome to the show. Let's go see what the markets are doing here. Dow is off 35 points right now, trading out at 16,680. S&P down two points, trading at 1895. Uh, composite is flat, down 23 cents. Russell 2000 off four dollars and 50 cents. Apple up uh, three bucks, trading on to 597. Chipotle in on the fray. It's uh, leading the charge. The upside up nine dollars, up about two percent. Belmont Industries (VMI) up 745. Netflix up six dollars. Regenerate Pharmaceuticals (REGN) up four. Core Laboratories up 370. DXP Enterprises horrible day yesterday, as I recall. Up uh, 5%, up uh, $3 uh, dollars right now. I seem to recall that being down with some pretty big volume out there. But, but I have to look at the stock chart. I can't say that I looked at it since. Uh, we've got uh, Rubicon Projects off 20, or up 25%. That's up $2.85. Uh, we've got uh, leading the charge the downside, a Fossil Group. That's off uh, $9. I believe it's got a confirmed A to B equals CD. And it wants to seek a lower price. I think like in the uh, 70s or 80s out there. Enzo Enzymotic, E N Z Y is the ticker symbol, down uh, 30% off six bucks. Hydrogenics off uh, five bucks, that's down 23%. URS Corp, URS the ticker symbol, down 9% off four dollars. Wind Resorts off four bucks. Whirlpool down 345. Google off a couple of bucks. IBM is down uh, two dollars. Dr. Reddy's Labs off five percent, down two dollars even, Stephen. All right, so where are we in the markets here? Let's start off. Let's take a look at intraday. Let's go from intraday to uh, daily charts out here. I've got the Rhodes Momentum Indicator system on my uh, chart. If you're watching us on Tiger TV, thanks so much for doing it. If you're listening on your radio or your mobile device at tfnn.mob, I don't forget you can get your live stream of the show. Take that smartphone device. 
go ahead and get to the home page of TFNN.com. And over on the upper right-hand side, you'll see a button, three little smartphones on that. You can click on that. The show will stream live. Of course, as long as you're on the home page of TFNN.com, our uh, man Andy Hecht is going to be doing a uh, workshop on Saturday, June the 7th. All the details are on the home page of TFNN.com. What we are looking at in the charts here is a 120-minute chart for the S&P futures. We're looking at uh, both the S&P as well as we'll look at the, we'll look at all of them. But we'll take a look at the uh, Dow next because we want to learn from a strength out here. Now, in the case of the uh, ES Mini out here, 120-minute chart, it's a form some resistance. Form the most recent uh, candlestick formation that had formed up at these highs here. Let me get my crosshair uh, working. Uh, was this little evening star, three river, three river evening star formation out here? That says it's the high of this uh, doji that two o'clock took place at two o'clock in the morning. That high is uh, eighteen ninety seven twenty five. That becomes a resistance point. However, what we're seeing here right now is we are seeing some selling. Let me just reload this here. Get the uh, current. There we go. Current vision here of the uh, chart and it's in this 120 minute time frame that we're in right now that's going to really help us to understand what's going on now this does not end for another two hours and 45 minutes but at this stage here it looks like to me we want to see it that the es mini wants to see is a deeper retracement uh, retracement tools on this are not as good as my uh, ensign window so let me just do that i'm just going to switch back and forth makes it uh, real easy out here i mean a moment we'll pull up the es mini I've got some other lines and notations drawn on this chart anyway, so let's go see what that shows us. Inside the ES Mini on this chart, we can see a rising trend. We can see a rising price channel. The trend line is the red line. The black lines are the rising price channel. What did price do? One number one inside the ES Mini. It completed a one to one A to B equals CD, the upside. That was on uh, Monday. Yeah, it's Wednesday. That was on Monday as price got up into the 1897-ish range out there. Then just moved sideways, which is a nice bullish thing to uh, do. But it never did break topside after that. Worked off the over, uh, so overbought uh, condition. Now what it's doing here with that little crossover that we were looking at, now what it's saying to us is, uh, I'd have to say retrace Mirage. We'll take a look at a couple different spots here. Uh, I would have to say 1881 is a game 1871 as well 1881 is a dead cat bounce 0 0.382 retracement really nothing wrong as long as it comes down there and it's doing it on lighter volume on the way down really nothing wrong with it moving to 1871 other than that's a, a 20 point uh, swing from where it's at right now and that will feel like a, a lot of pain out there but again that um, you know it's, it's so far so far the retracement has been pretty meek out here but it does look like what it's trying to do it wants to at least pull back to 1881 maybe 1871 that is inside the es mini let's go take a look at what the uh dow is uh, doing we're going to flip back and forth from uh to uh, charts out here well let me see if i need to do that let me just do this let's put up the uh, dow futures here we go here's the dow futures out here uh, the Dow futures also had been traveling a nice little rising price channel. Price did manage to get back up into it, and that was at the uh, 10 a.m. time frame on May 24th. But really, if it was going to join that party again, it really should not have given it up. Nonetheless, we take a look at what the uh, Dow is doing. It was certainly working off and over, bought that condition. It is not oversold here just yet. If we take a look at a normal retracement, I would come off of the low the swing point here from 12 noon, that was on the May 9th out here. That's going to be the first place that I would look. Dead cat bounce as uh, 16601. I would have to say the uh, bar where we saw that breakout at 10 o'clock in the morning, that low there, that's important for it to hold a 16572. If it cannot hold that area, what we're likely looking at is a retracement inside of the uh, Dow taking us back to... Uh, Probably the 16,469 ish level. That would bring us all the way back into this uh, swing point down here, which was really used for an A to B equals CD. I'm sure it was used for an A to B equals CD to the upside out here. Let's go take a look at what the, uh, yeah, look at that, right to the right to the T. So that is where it looks like the uh, Dow futures want to head back to probably the 16,451 level. You're at 16,628. So you can imagine that it's going to feel again like the sky is falling out there. That's what's going on in the 120-minute chart here for the uh, Dow. If we go take a look at the uh, uh, Russell 2000, that's the Russell. Now, this is a 10-minute delay I've got on this uh chart out here um if we take a look at the russell 2000 what it has done thus far it's come all the way back into uh into its sign of strength out here now this is perhaps the most important chart for us to be paying attention to that sign of strength is one that took place at 11 30 in the morning and that was on may the 12th and that low out there is 10 i'm sorry is 1109 
50. You also can see here that what the uh, Russell 2000 is doing here on this 120-minute chart, it is trying to uh, test the uh, top of the descending price channel that it had broken out. It's really important for the uh, Russell 2000, the uh, sign of a weakness, which had a nice sign of strength on Monday. It's really important that it ends up at the end of the day rejecting both that uh, breakout session, which is 1109, as well as the uh, top of the descending price channel. What happens if it doesn't? Well, what happens if it doesn't? It probably moves all the way back and tests the uh, lows at least one more time inside of the Russell. Excuse me, inside of the Russell. That would take you down to about the 1087 area. So again, one one thing at a time. But that's what's going on inside that chart. Is there anything that we left out yet? Yeah, probably the NQ. So let's go take a look at the uh, Nasdaq which, uh, you know, is your second weakest area, but lately has been really strong. And it's going to be the NASDAQ that is going to be the uh, index that is going to pull these uh, markets up out here. So what is the NASDAQ doing? So far, not too bad. So it is really doing everything it can to uh, fend off the uh, bears here. If we take a look at what the NASDAQ has done, we take this back, you'll see some red descending uh, price channel lines here. Price has moved, moved down. Price broke out of that level back here on uh, April the uh, 21st. Uh, that's what helped us to form the uh, rising price channel out here, the black lines on my screen. We can see the lows really were cemented real nicely with the uh, session from about 2 in the afternoon on April 15th, uh, 2 in the afternoon on April the uh, 28th out here. And what price was able to do on the uh, trading session at 12 noon on May 12th was break back inside the uh, group. Now, what it has done here this morning... And it's really working hard to try to uh, stay uh, bullish. You can see price here has pierced that uh, bottom of the rising price channel. Did that and rejected it so far this morning. If it cannot hold this area, then what we're likely to see inside of the NQ is a retracement. That retracement should take price down to about the 3580. That'll be the first stop. That is... Um, that is uh, 3580, that's your point, 382 retracement off of its last set of uh, swing points, uh, or 3553, the .618 retracement level of its last set of swing points. So I'd have to say, if in fact we see a failure inside of the uh, NASDAQ here, that's what we should expect price to uh, do. And it's going to be from here that it will get a ton of information with regard to any potential moves to the upside. Now, if you are a listener to this show. You know that uh, Stevie Sun here has been long and strong. We were long inside our newsletter. This morning I saw enough cracks in the armor out there to uh, say that one conservative traders would go ahead and protect the profits that we had. And then I uh, said, uh, you know, on second thought, a, a wise trader, I don't think I used that term, but uh, we should all just go ahead and uh, book our profits. Now, I did not go short here. All I did was just simply took our profits on our long position because I want to see how this market pulls back here. Because I do believe that sell in May doesn't mean sell in May. 877-927-6648. We'll be right back, folks. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. Wouldn't it be great if you could get a red light, green light indicator that gives you signals on 25 different future contracts? Now you can with Taz Signal Box. This red light, green light market profile system dynamically updates 24 hours a day and provides you with important trend and trade signals on nine different commodities, nine different indices, and eight different currencies. Right now, you can receive a free two-week trial to Taz Signal Box. For all the details and to find out how the Signal Box works, 
Visit the front page of TFNN.com. And the Hex Powerful Weekly Newsletter, the Technomental Commodity Report, has delivered multiple triple-digit winning trades in recent months. And right now is the perfect time to get a full month long trial to Andy's newsletter with no obligation to pay anything. Andy publishes his weekly newsletter every Thursday morning where he breaks down the commodity market and provides his subscribers with specific trading recommendations based on his trading methodology. By signing up for a free trial to the Technomental Commodity Report, you'll get a full 30 days to try out this powerful newsletter service and see for yourself the types of trades Andy has recommended for his subscribers. When you sign up for a 30-day free trial, you are under no obligation to pay anything. And should you decide to continue, you'll lock in the low rate of only $59 a month. Sign up right now for the Technomental Commodity Report and make sure you're ready to catch the next big trade in commodities. For more information and to get started today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. You've always taken the long view when it comes to investing, but what if there's an opportunity right under your nose? What if you could be more responsive to market trends to seek to boost your portfolio performance right now while seeking to reduce your overall risk? At Direction Funds, we connect investors with alternative strategies that seek to maximize their returns. Smart investors deserve smart alternatives. Find yours at directionfunds.com. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risk charges, and expenses of Direction Funds carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction Funds. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact the Direction Funds at 800-851-0511. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. Investing in index funds may be more volatile than investing in broadly diversified funds. Distributed by Rafferty Capital Markets, LLC. Many of our new listeners have heard about the Tiger's Den, but wondered, what exactly is it? The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information, and a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of your favorite TFNN shows, plus see all the charts as they happen, live, during those shows, and have access to all those charts. You can test drive the Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days. It will greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets. Details on the Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. Steve, take your phone calls now. now. Toll free at 1 877 927 6648. Internationally at 727 445 1044. Welcome back, folks. Uh, Dow's off 55. SP is down uh, 5. Uh, let's go check in on uh, gold, uh, silver, light, sweet, crude, see what they're doing. Uh, you got gold trading up 11 bucks right now. 1305.70. If you're watching us on Tiger TV on my screen, uh, it is the candles represent uh, what's going. That uh, they represent gold. The uh, red squiggly line that happens to be the U.S. dollar index. And what I want to, uh, what this really shows is that uh, you know gold and the U.S. dollar index uh, really haven't gotten out of uh, sorts here. Maybe they did for about uh, maybe a few days, but that's it. Remember. A directional indicator is all that we can really use this for. We can't say, hey, the dollar index is back 10 cents. That's the equivalent of gold being up $11. It doesn't work like that. Again, what you want to do is take a look at the directional indicator. This morning, we've got the, the red line on my uh, chart out here, the U.S. dollar index is inverted. That means if the uh, red line is moving higher, the U.S. dollar index is getting weaker, right, because the correlation should be a weaker dollar it uh, correlates to a, a stronger gold price out here. And we can see that that is exactly what has gone on, even though uh, there was not much of a uh, pullback inside of uh, gold as silver got the uh, silver, as uh, the U.S. dollar index got very strong back on the trading sessions of uh, May uh, 6th, May 7th, May 8th, and so forth. But we did see, in fact, a, a pullback. It just wasn't anywhere that correlated uh, dollar-wise or percentage-wise or anything to what was going on inside the U.S. dollar index. U.S. dollar index, back 10 cents this morning. Uh, gold happens to be up by $10. So those things are in the lockstep out here. What gold really needs to do right now is take out its resistance level, its most recent one. A little evening star pattern out here that says the 13, 15, 18 level is going to be really important for gold to uh, you know move above that. Uh, one person could say... I could say it, that uh, we had a, a little uh, bullish formation here. This is, a, in essence, we've had really what you could call one key reversal session, two, three. This is our third 
what would qualify as a key reversal-ish type session. That's where your intercession high and low exceed the prior day. That's where the close is in the opposite direction of the uh, current trend out there. And then you got that third element. And that's where these three candle sessions don't necessarily qualify uh, technically as a key reversal session because it needs to come from an extended condition. But nonetheless, let's uh, respect the candle formations for what they are out here and uh, that says that if that's the case, then this uh, bottom should be really significant. The bottom, of course, being the low of April 1st out there, 1277.40. So you don't want to see Goldilocks close below 1277.40 out there. That would be bad news. That would be bad news in my book. Not that I'm on that long gold here. Well, I guess I am to a certain extent, but... Um, it would be bad news because it would set up an A to B equals CD to the downside that would take Goldilocks back into that uh, December 31st area. But right now, the uh, bulls absolutely defending their position when it comes to uh, gold at those lows at that 1277.40 area. Inside of uh, silver here, silver's up 25 cents right now, about 1 and 3 tenths percent out here. Inside of uh, silver, really looking for a close above 19, what was it, 1963? Uh, June 20th. I'm not going to be able to show that here on the uh, July contract that I've got open. So let me go. I see I've got a continuous contract in this tab here. Yes, I do. Key number is going to be, in my opinion, a key number to be watching for is 1963. You're 1980. So that's good. That is uh, good for sure. Let's take a look at uh, volume. Let me go back, take a look at the actual current contract that we're in, see what kind of volume we've got today. Uh, Volume-wise, so far, we've got uh, silver up with 30,000 contracts. It is taking on a, a swing point that's got 30,000, so that's not too bad. Looks like uh, silver on its way to forming a small A to B equals CD to the upside. Should take price to the uh, 2013, maybe 20, I'd have to say more like $20.43. Remember, A to B equals CD patterns, they only complete as a one-to-one -one pattern 60% uh, of the time, around 60% of the time. The other 40-ish percent of the time, they're doing something else. In the case of silver here, uh, a close today above uh, 1977. Uh, and at this stage here, it's got the volume, would be the uh, promise of a uh, price moving up to probably the $20.43 level. We take a look at light sweet crude. Let's go check in on the pattern here. Light sweet crude up 68, 63 cents right now. Uh, it's trading out at 102.33. And light sweet crude has gotten back into the hair club for hair club. What guy has gotten back into the club? What am I thinking? Hair club for men out there? Of course, I do have that receding uh, forehead out there. So. Um, uh, probably I could uh, I could stand uh, joining that club, but nonetheless it's a still pretty thick uh, scalp head of hair out there. Uh, they've got uh, light sweet crude back inside. It's a trend line. It's channel lines out here, and that is more bullish than uh, bearish. Nice wide ranging bar yesterday to get back inside the uh, club. Uh, yesterday went from a low of 100.36 up to 102.05. We get back. Let's go study uh, light sweet crude a little thorough, more thoroughly, and see where it's headed to. Looks like 102.95 is in store. We'll be right back, folks. If you're an active trader looking for that extra edge when it comes to trading and investments, then now is a great time to get a two-week free trial to Tom O'Brien's daily market letter, Market Insights. Tom O'Brien's daily newsletter, Market Insights, comes out every market day at around 9.30 a.m. and provides Tom's daily commentary on the broad market, including the Dow, NASDAQ, and S&P, plus specific trade recommendations. There's even an update published most afternoons to keep you informed about the day's market activity. He'll give you the entry price, price target, and stock price of each stock and option trade. With Market Insights, there's nothing left to guessing. For all the details and to get your two-week free trial to Market Insights started today, visit TFNN.com. Daryl Martin coined the phrase diagnostic trading and we're happy to announce that his diagnostic box spread analyzer has finally been released. 
The Diagnostic Box Spread Analyzer helps you easily identify the best box spreads on Nadex in seconds, plus you receive access to the diagnostic deviation levels, as well as step-by-step -step training videos teaching you how to trade Nadex spreads so you can quickly master the mechanics of this simple yet powerful trading instrument. By pulling live data from the Nadex Exchange, the Diagnostic Box Spread Analyzer does all the math for you, calculating risk, reward potential, distance to break even for both outright spreads and spreads used to hedge the underlying market. Visit the front page of TFNN.com today to get your two-week free trial to Daryl Martin's Diagnostic Box Spread Analyzer and gain access to the valuable information it can provide when trading the Nadex Box Spreads. The Path of Least Resistance is David White's daily trading newsletter, and if you're looking for active trading ideas, then now's a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service. David uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his Path of Least Resistance newsletter. Using a combination of equity trades along with options, David keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted. Don't miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details, and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN.com now. No matter where you listen to TFNN programming, we want you to know you can always access your favorite shows on demand through TFNN.com. TFNN airs live programming every market day from 9 a.m. till 6 p.m. Eastern. And you can view each program by accessing Tiger TV through our homepage. We even have an easy link for all mobile devices, including iPhones and iPads, located at the top right-hand corner of the TFNN homepage. You can use your smartphone to view Tiger TV. But if you don't have a mobile connection that can keep up with streaming live video, then you can simply visit TFNN.mob in the browser of your smartphone for live streaming audio of all of our programs. The mission of TFNN is to educate our audience directly and interactively through our interactive website and radio call and talk shows. TFNN is able to teach all levels of investors the technical skills needed to trade in today's marketplace. In order to get the best information possible, TFNN has assembled the most respected financial minds in the country to provide the most current news and comprehensive advice available. TFNN.com. Educating investors. This segment is brought to you by TFNN. Test drive all the newsletters for free at TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. Dow's off 43. S&P is down 4. NASDAQ's off uh, 9 points. Uh, Russell 2000 off uh, 8 and uh, we were taking a look at light sweet crude before we went into the uh, breakout here. Now, light sweet crude, I, I didn't look at the uh, commitment of traders uh, data uh, last week. I can't imagine it had changed too substantially over the prior weeks. That the uh, large commercial traders, big money out there, uh, they were uh, taking positions that they expect a light sweet crude to fall pretty heavily. Uh, so I'll take, I don't know if I'll get a chance to really take a look at the data here over the next uh, 24 hours. I've just got too many things on my plate to do. But um, I'm assuming that, that that is the case here. And Light Sweet Crude is getting back into its rising price channel. So I think what we want to uh, pay attention to, right around the 103 level, uh, could be the formation of a 0.786 Gartley cell pattern. Now, the key here would be what's nice about that pattern What's key here is that if price stops in that area, gives us a reversal signal, and then gets back below the rising price channel, that would be a that would set up a nice reward to risk trade, in my opinion, inside shorting light sweet crude out there, and that would set up the potential for the A to B equal C D to the downside. That pattern, let's assume that uh, price stops right around that 103 area, that would then say we would see a price point of maybe 97.70 or so. Maybe 96.28 come into play out here. Now it's a daily chart, and this is the uh, this is the June contract that we're looking at. But I want to go ahead and put up the larger term time frame, the weekly chart out here, because I said the A to B equals CD pattern on that, which is the ultimate of any type of a Gartley pattern, right around the 97.75 area. Here's a weekly chart for light sweet crude. You can see still 
still gosh darn uh, strong out here. It hasn't been down recently to test the bottom of a rising price channel. This is a rising price channel that takes us back into the 2009 time frame. That's how strong it is. And if that level gets busted through, that could spell curtains for light sweet crude. And the bottom of the uh, the bottom of the rising price channel here, maybe next week, is probably about ninety six seventy five or so. I think that was the number I gave on the as the ultimate outcome for that uh, Gartley pattern, right? Uh, what did I do out there? Yeah, ninety six ninety seven seventy five ninety six twenty nine is one one point two seven two out there, and so. Uh, that's I think that is that's one of the better trades to be observing to be watching for. In that case, there you would probably take a look at using you know as well one one trade possibility would be using uh, SCO. And then the key would be watching price as it gets down to the assuming that the trade were to work out like this. Watching price as it were to move down into the bottom of that rising price channel out here. Um, and so we'll see if that, in fact, is the uh, trade setup that comes into uh, being. Let's take a look at the 30-year Treasury. I have not done this here for uh, quite a, a while now. The 30-year Treasury has had this uh, little uh, rising uh, uh, um, rising uh, uh, trend line here that it is uh, dealing with and is breaking through. And uh, this, uh, this pattern here actually typically has a bearish outcome. And this this... This pattern, this bearish outcome pattern that we're looking at, just shows you how strong the 30-year Treasury is. Right now, trading out at 136.31. If price uh, does ever fall below the uh, bottom of that uh, trend line, I'd have to say here you'd really need to see it close below right now about 134.16. Then all bets are off to the upside out here. But uh, it does show you the strength inside of the 30-year Treasury. Uh, let's take a look at uh, some things that are moving. Let's take a look at some core holdings out here. And see what they've got going on. See what's going on inside those. Uh, Priceline, let's look at Priceline. Priceline yesterday trying to uh, take out and change its trend. This has been a nice uh, nice trend to the uh, downside here. Just simply using, from a trend line standpoint, the high of March 6th, that was at a 1378. Right now it's trading at 1172. And I'm using, you can either use the uh, top of the candle, I'm using the body of the candle from April 24th out there, and that is at the 1232 mark. So price here, we've seen a nice little bounce. You can see volume has dissipated uh, as it has moved higher. Yesterday's volume, uh, 593,000 shares. The day before, 778. So far today, it's done 149,000 shares out there. So Priceline, one of the uh, momentum stocks here, uh, not having enough momentum to break its little down a trend that it is in as we speak right now. If we look at, let's go take a look at IBM. We haven't looked at IBM for a while. I believe that was trading uh, lower here this morning. Let's go see what IBM is doing. IBM completing a 1 to 1 A to B equals CD as it got up to the 198.92 level. It did that on April the 10th. Did it with a nice little shooting star, the opposite of the hammer candle out here. This is on a daily chart that set up a resistance inside of IBM at the 199.21 level. Uh, came off that area, came off of it with some decent volume on April the uh, 7th. Uh, it was able to get up and close that old potential resistance line as price was able to close above the 195 low from April the uh, 16th. Nonetheless, it's pushing lower this morning into a swing point. 1.2 million shares pushing into 3.8 million shares. So IBM is pushing lower with volume out here as we speak right now. Has not gotten down to the bottom of the swing point, but as long as it closes inside 190.30, you're at 189.79, it ought to go test the uh, low of 186.93. Uh, let's go see what else I've got out here to uh, look at. Let's go look at Apple. Let's go see what uh, Apple is uh, doing. As soon as I can find the chart, here we go, lower left. Apple trading at 595.92. Apple trying to uh, take on its resistance area as well, and that is from the uh, swing point high on December the 3rd, 594.59. It's at 596.30 as we speak right now. If Apple can close above it, it's only been able to close above it once. If Apple can close above that level, that brings in the uh, promise of a move into the 650-ish type area, and that'll be the uh, next area of resistance. That was the gap down created on October the 9th. The low of the October 5th candle is 651.28. That would be its next area of resistance if it can close above its current area of resistance. Volume-wise so far this morning, uh, behind this move, uh, 2 million shares going into 
13 million shares. Really, it's going into 37 million, but let's take the easier one, and that would be 13 million shares. So it doesn't look like it's going to have the volume here today, at least to blow through that area to the upside. Let's look at the Visa, see what Visa here is uh, doing, one of the top weightings inside of the uh, Dow. Uh, Visa had formed a 0.618 Gertley buy pattern that uh, did that on the trading session of April the 11th. That low is 194.84. There were 7 million shares down there. Uh, Visa gapped down on the trading session of April 25th with 9 million shares, but uh, it was able to go ahead and reject price. Looks like uh, what Visa is doing here is setting up an A to B equals C to the upside that will set up the next Gartley pattern. That A to B equals C D, that lightning bolt pattern, will look like this. The A point being the uh, Gartley buy low from April the 11th. Your B point will be the uh, swing from April 17th. A pull back down into that gap down on April 25th. 215.23 to 219 would be the uh, likely area out here at 219. That forms the next uh, Gertley pattern. Uh, that would be a 0.618 Gertley cell pattern. Let's go ahead and color that in differently. Oh, look at that. That's got beautiful Fibonacci numbers out there. That's got a 1.618 expansion of its B to C swing point. Let me get rid of the formation tool out there. A little bit easier for you to uh, take a look at. So there is a, a beautiful pattern. Let's get rid of that retracement level out here. So I, my expectation would be that the Visa will find some way to find the legs to uh, make it up to that uh, level out there. A little doji candle yesterday, so it is running into, it's getting tired as it tries to take out this uh, swing point from April the uh, 17th, 211.54. Uh, volume out on that swing was uh, 3 million shares. Yesterday as it pushed up into it was with 1.7 million shares. So ideally... Visa would set up a, a Tiger Gartley sell pattern in about the 219 area if it can find the uh, legs to move up another uh, $8 or so. Let me see what else I have inside of uh, this. ExxonMobil, let's go see what ExxonMobil is doing. Obviously a key element of the energy sector, the XLE, because if it's waiting inside here, uh, let me delete a few things here. There we go, let's just delete everything. Make that easier. So as we take a look at the Exxon Mobil, formed a little uh, doji candle back here at the highs on May the 7th. A, a reversal here, uh, really forming the uh, evening star pattern that says that the resistance level is 103.45. Uh, looks like the XL or Exxon, Exxon Mobil traded slightly higher this morning. 11 million shares up at that swing point, up at that doji candle. It was pushing yesterday with 7.5 million shares. So far this morning, 1.4 million shares. It does not have the energy to push on through higher out there. In fact, retracement-wise, what has it done since it formed that uh, Three River Evening Star? It's done about a 0.618 retracement. So ExxonMobil here, in fact, if it gets some legs to the downside, it's got a small little A to B equal CD to the downside, would take price in about the 99.90 area, and that would be back to its swing point from April 24th out there at a price point of 99.86. Um, that's what ExxonMobil looks like it is uh, doing at the uh, moment, uh, we see expansion-wise. If it is able to take out that uh, resistance level, ExxonMobil would likely rise to about the 105.14 area where it would form a uh, butterfly. That butterfly would look a little bit like uh, this. Let's go draw that pattern in here. So you got two different uh, patterns inside, potential patterns inside ExxonMobil. There's your 1.272 butterfly pattern. But at the moment, We've got resistance. It uh, doesn't have enough volume as it's pushing higher. and more likely looks like a A to B equals C D to the uh, downside. Let me take a look at uh, some things here that are popping and dropping. So you've got uh, a couple of equities. Uh, let me switch over to a different tab here. Let's take a look at uh, Valmont Industries. VMI is the uh, ticker symbol. VMI. Let's go see what it is uh, doing. It's up a nice uh, seven, uh, by about six sixty four, about four and a half percent. So you've got volume inside the uh, move here, taking on a swing point. Let's go see what Valmont Industries is doing. So its most recent swing point, right back here on the trading session of April twenty second, uh, three hundred forty eight thousand shares out there up this morning with one seventy five. So it's pushing in with some nice volume out here. See what it's trading into. It's a swing point high, only has 69,000 shares out here. So it looks like uh, Valmont wants to uh, make a run for the 164.93 level. It's trading at 157.05 right now. Let's look at uh, Zulily. Z-U is the uh, ticker symbol. 
That is up a nice uh, 12% this morning. Ooh. The U is, this does not look uh, very good. This was an IPO back on, uh, came uh, came public, uh, looks like November 15th, 2013. Uh, price spread that day, 36.36 to 41 bucks out here. It's trading at $36 right now. This thing uh, made a uh, heck of a move with some nice volume on February 25th. Two trading sessions later, was able to go check out the 73.50 level and then proceeded to move all the way down to this morning's low, which was $28.75. So it is off the uh, low here this morning. Uh, and it's got good volume behind the move, 5.7 million shares. It's going to try to take out this uh, little gap down, which only has 6 million shares. So Zoo Lily moving higher out here. If this was a real sign of strength and a real bottom that was put in, what you should see inside this equity because of all the selling pressure it's had, you should see it come back and test this morning's low, do it on light volume, and uh, then that might be, in fact, uh, forming a, a little bottom out here. But that is on Zoo Lily. Uh, we were looking at uh, Fossil in the earlier show. Let's go back and check on uh, Fossil. That's the leader dollar-wise to the downside here. It's off uh, $8.76 out here. Let's go see what kind of volume is behind its move. Fossil's got big volume behind its move out here. Fossil wants to make a move down to the 89-ish area. It's trading out at uh, 102.76, and it's taking out a, a swing point with volume out here. It's taking out the uh, February 3rd. Level 1.3 million shares. Uh, it is already done today, 2.5 million shares. So it uh, looks like uh, Fossil really wants to uh, trade much, much lower. I would like to take a look at Whirlpool, so I think I will. WHR is the uh, ticker symbol. This had been, has been a very nice, strong stock out here. Let's go see what it is doing this morning. It's trading a bit lower. Let's clean up the uh, chart. Let's uh, pull this back out here. So it looks like uh, this had another sign of strength back on the trading session of uh, October 22nd. It looks like really what uh, Whirlpool is going to uh, do is make its way down into this uh, bar right here, which would be the October 14th area. Ideally, it would trade all the way back to 129.22, do it on less than 3.7 million shares out there, and that sets up maybe a little bit of a consolidation up at its highs. But uh, Whirlpool, if you take a look at this equity, Pull this back on a monthly chart out here. Look at this nice. Uh, in fact, let's look at this. It looks like it's completed an A to B, or it's completed an A to B equals CD off of the 2009 lows out here. Yeah, it's uh, already done a one-to-one. -one. Let me refresh my chart. I don't know if this is all live data. There we go. That's better. Oh, interesting. So on the uh, weekly chart here for Whirlpool, after it made, after it made more than a one-to-one -one A to B equals CD, a big key reversal week out here. That says it's got significant resistance at the 160 mark out there. Uh, right now trading at 149.86. Uh, Whirlpool on the uh, weekly chart. Let's see, did that actually make a expansion? Did this make a uh, butterfly as well? I'm looking from the 2007 highs. Yeah, a little bit more than 1.272 uh, butterfly pattern out here. Whirlpool. I still would have to say that it's going to come down and test the uh, lows here, right around the 124.39. That's the week of February 28th. Dow's off 42, S&P down uh, 3, composite off 6, Russell 2,000, the weak link in the chain, off $8.60. We'll be right back. Has the current market volatility continue to stop you out of trades when the market spikes against you? Now is the perfect time to open up an account with Nadex. Nadex, the North American Derivatives Exchange, is a brand new, completely regulated Chicago-based exchange. And unlike most other exchanges, Nadex allows you to trade directly through them with direct market access when using their completely free trading platform, which also features real-time charts and full customization capability. One of the advantages of trading with Nadex in volatile markets is that your risk is always capped and you have the ability of keeping your trades open even when the market spikes against you. Nadex is completely brand new with a line of unique trading products that are unavailable anywhere else. See how it works at Nadex.com. That's N-A-D-E-X.com. Or click on the Nadex banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Futures and options trading involves risk and may not be appropriate for all investors.
Tom O'Brien's weekly gold letter, The Gold Report, gives complete and concise coverage of the entire gold market. Inside, you'll get Tom's commentary on gold, the dollar, the rand, the bond, the XAU, the HUI, and detailed coverage of nearly 25 mining stocks. He'll give you the entry price, price target, and stock price of each stock trade. The Gold Report is a long-term newsletter where the focus is on building real wealth through the management of a successful portfolio of gold stocks. With a lifetime of knowledge and almost 12 years of writing his informative weekly newsletter, The Gold Report, Tom O'Brien can provide you with the important market information to help you make better trades in the gold market. Don't let the next bull run in gold pass you by. To get a month-long free trial to The Gold Report, an $85 value, visit the front page of TFNN.com today. David White's newsletter, The Technology Insider, is focused like a laser on finding the next big things in technology. If you had invested only $10,000 in Microsoft in 1986, you'd have been a millionaire by 2000. Disruptive technology like Microsoft's is the key to these massive long-term profits, and The Tech Insider is the vehicle from TFNN to capitalize on these opportunities. This is the go-to newsletter that identifies, monitors, and profits on mostly little-known cutting-edge companies with great long long-term prospects. David's experience is as an inventor of Emmy-winning animation products for TV and Hollywood that propelled a company public. Match that with 14 years as a full-time trader, and he's uniquely qualified to guide you through the light-speed world of ever-evolving high-tech. If you're ready to ride the next big technology bull market for less than $40 per month, log on to TFNN.com and get your two-week free trial to the Technology Insider. Get in on the ground floor of the next big thing today. We're told to follow our passion and everything else will fall into place. I hope that's what each of you are doing each and every day. Hi, I'm Steve Rhodes, host of the Money Master Show at TFN.com, and my passion for technical analysis is what led me to the most fundamental discovery and pattern recognition, the Rhodes Momentum Indicator, market scanner and trading strategy, a set of tools that identify the momentum and power of the trend, the likes of which have never been seen before for every market and every time frame. Yes, folks, the trend is your friend, you're on the other side. New to technical analysis? This is the place to start. And experienced traders, take advantage of the trend like never before. Experience the power of the Rhodes Momentum Indicator each day, available to subscribers of my newsletter service, Mastering Probability. I guarantee your satisfaction for the next 30 days unconditionally, so there's no risk to you other than being on the wrong side of the trend. Mastering Probability, available on the homepage of TFNN.com. And folks, live with passion. Catch Basil Chapman as he uses his Chapman Wave methodology to call the markets. The Tiger Technician's Hour, next on TFNN. Welcome back, folks. It is full moon Wednesday out here. Right now, the Dow is off 45. S&P is down uh, 3. So let's kind of... Let's kind of uh, uh, summarize where it is that uh, Stevie Sun uh, sees us in the uh, marketplace here for you. Now, the first chart up on my screen, this is the one that I think is uh, perhaps the most important chart for us to be paying attention to. The uh, top portion of the chart, that is the uh, S&P futures contract. I could do with the S&P as well. It looks the same out here. But since I look at things uh, during the uh, evening hours, early morning hours, this way it gives me a total better perspective as to what's really going on. The bottom of the screen is the euro japanese yen now there are there's only one time here recently that i've been able to find a uh, time period where the euro japanese yen was moving lower and the markets were moving higher now and it was recent uh, as well it was back here in the time frame of february so you can see here in february uh, if you're looking at the bottom of my screen here that's euro japanese yen um, and it's a time period where the correlation didn't have any meaning out there now, if I start to see that happen more and more and more, then I have to go back and say, hmm, something to think about, figure out what is next. But knowing that that really I've only seen that happen uh, once a year as of late, meaning the last several years, I'm going to go ahead and uh, just say it was just simply a pattern that failed. I mean, patterns fail, right? They can't, nothing, nothing works 100% of the time. So what is it that we know as we take a look at the uh, stock charts here right now? What we know is that the uh, S&P, the ES Mini, has been moving higher. 
up until the uh, up until today as we speak right now let me just do it like this so it has been moving higher with the euro yen now moving lower now what we're seeing here with this uh, market uh, slight market sell off right now is we're seeing things get back into uh, sync out here the question is, and just like when we took a look at the U.S. dollar index along with gold, remember it's a directional thing. It doesn't tell us how far any type of pullback. But right now we're beginning to see things move back into sync. It needs more than just one day. It needs more than just one day out there in order for that to take place. So what I then do is I go back and I take a look at, well, what's going on inside the currency pair itself? When I take a look at that stock chart, what's the message behind that stock chart? And as we take a look at that, or I should say currency chart, right, when I take a look at what's going on inside its charting patterns here, it tells me that it wants lower price. Why do I say that? Number one, price finally broke the uh, consolidation level, the breakout candle. And that was the March 6th level. That was the 140.38. That's the red uh, uh, rectangular box that is on my screen here right now. And that also happens to kind of uh, coordinate, correlate price-wise to the 0.786 retracement of this light blue pattern that is a 0.786 Gartley sell out there. And that says that... Uh, Price here inside the euro, Japanese yen, wants to move down to 137.83. I suspect that when price gets down there, then we can assess what kind of damage has, if any, you know, I can't guarantee that there's going to be damage. We'll assess what kind of damage has been done to the uh, markets out here. Has the volume on the uh, pullback been on a uh, light volume, therefore setting up a uh, the next move to the upside here, uh, taking us in, even though we're in the unseasonal selling cycle. Remember, it was just a cutesy rhyme of sell in May. It's a six-month, six-month unfavorable seasonal cycle that does not mean that it necessarily has to top on may the 13th out there not that it can't but that is one of the most important uh, charts here that i am focused on and paying attention to of course it's a long lost cousin that's the uh, vix index uh hits kind of saying hey i don't care about your liquidity gauge in the euro japanese yen i don't buy it just yet because it's trading at 12 15 out here it's basically a flat session out there and so, therefore, uh, we're not seeing much in the way of volatility. And as long as that uh, stays below the 50-day exponential moving average, there's not a ton of damage that can be done to the markets. Folks, it is wonderful Wednesday. Thanks so much for joining me. Stay tuned. Our man Basil Chapman is up next. And we got Daryl Martin, David White, the Tom O'Brien Show from 4 to 6. Have a wonderful Wednesday, folks. Look forward to seeing you soon. Since 1984, Basil Chapman has been using the Chapman Wave methodology to advise traders of his expert market opinion. While originally hand-drawing charts from the late 1970s into the 1980s, Basil noticed that prices under most circumstances virtually always had a certain number of legs to the upside before declining sharply. Later, Basil found that computer software, which included the standard market technical indicators, enhanced the degree of accuracy in calling price turns, as well as market trend calls. Thus was born the Chapman Wave Sequence. Using the Chapman Wave methodology along with other indicators, Basil Chapman advises his subscribers of his expert market opinion each market day with his opening call newsletter. Right now, you can get a two-week free trial to the opening call, Basil's daily trading newsletter, by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during that trial and pay absolutely nothing. Get your two-week free trial to Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, today by visiting TFNN.com. This is TFNN.